Let's and go. the reason is, is because I'm going to say something that might upset people. Okay, let's do it. Miyamoto needed to keep his nose out of that game. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> It's me, Sean Capri, and welcome to episode 125 of We The Gamer Cast, the official podcast of WeTheNerdy.com, and it comes to you on iTunes, Google Play, and Mother Love and YouTube every Monday. Thank you for subscribing, and if you're on the video, now is a great time to hit that thumbs up. Thank you for sharing and rating us and leaving reviews, even though... I can't even find them. I spent a good amount of today trying to uh, see if there's anything new over on the review side. I, I have a sense that there's at least one more since the last time I checked about a year ago. But anyways, I'm getting way ahead of myself. If you're new, here's the deal. Every week I have sweet hangs with a stranger from the internet. And if you want to be part of the show, it's easy. Just tweet it to me at Sean Capri, Sean like Connor Capri like the pants. And we're well into the swing of things here, everybody, in 2018. I hope all of your New Year's resolutions are rock-solid habits, but that's not even happening, is it? Has anybody actually locked down one of their New Year's resolutions? Are you guys, is that treating you well, or have we, have we already abandoned that? Have we already realized or forgotten all of the uh, aspirations that we set out for ourselves? Right back to eating crappy food and uh, our gaming resolutions. Who knows? Who knows what's happening? Guys, um, you know, not, none of this would actually be possible at least on the video side, and we definitely wouldn't be able to have returning guests like we did with Adam Leonard last week if it wasn't for everybody over at patreon.com slash make us better. And I want to give a quick thank you to all of our producers, especially our platinum executive producer, Mr. Corey Hicks, our gold executive producer, Sheldon Benedict, and all of our gentlemen executive producers, Nick Militia from Next Level Games, Joel Brooks, James Johnson, Dr. Doom, Jesse Armstrong, Glocko Schaefer, David Ray, Mike Drummy, Brendan Myers, Aaron Doherty, Martini Jean and Kieran Smith. Thank you so much. And our and our latest patron, Mr. Alex Van Aken. Thank you so much, Alex. That is what a wonderful what a wonderful surprise, man. Not not necessary, but I appreciate the support, especially coming from somebody as amazing as you. And I know that somebody who you podcast with will be on the show very soon. Hopefully that all uh, hopefully it all lands on, and we have a great show for you guys today with Mr. Gary Gray. Thank you, Gary, for a little last minute scheduling that happened this week. And I'm recording this now on Sunday night. I wanted to play a little bit more of one of the games I'll talk about in a second. But before I get into what I'm playing, quick high five and shout out to previous guest. Mr. Grouchy Surge starting up his own podcast, Following the Dream. You know him, Backlog underscore Blues. He's starting up the Backlog Buster Show with um, with Trash Turkey, with Jeremy, man. Um, if you guys haven't already, please go subscribe. It's the the Backlog Busters. You can you can follow them on Twitter at Backlog underscore underscore Busters. And uh, they are struggling with many of the same things that you and I are struggling with, just trying to, to balance money and time and being a grown-up and enjoying the thing that we all enjoy most and of course that's that's video games so give them a listen i i said that i told them that i was listening over twitter and they said oh be be gentle be kind and you know i found myself a half an hour later i was still awake so it didn't put me to sleep so there's the old sean capri stamp of approval congratulations you guys um Jeremy needs to have on this show. Trash Turkey is, as he's known to to most people, I'm not sure. I, I'm being kind of like, do I put out his name? I'm not sure, Jeremy, if you're putting your, even Jeremy. I might be saying, I may have said too much already. Um, I need to put out a plea. If anybody out there has an Elgato, especially an Elgato uh, HD60 Pro, it's the one that goes in your computer. I don't want Elgato to take over my system. It takes over all the sound and everything, and it still doesn't really do what I want it to do. I I have to say, guys, I, I was a little frustrated yesterday trying to get this thing set up, and it's almost to the point where I go, like, I just don't need, like, do, I don't need, I, I'm trying to get rid of frustration in my life. I, I don't want, I don't want more frustration. So if anybody out there has any tips and, like, a specific solution so that, I don't need anything proprietary to Elgato in terms of like their software that comes with it. I just want the the thing to capture, but I want OBS to be my my uh, my capture and my streaming source, and I want to be able to adjust the volume 
from my game audio separately. I can see that I can use it in, in OBS. Anyways, this is what a waste of time that was, guys. If any of you know have any experience, please leave a message under the YouTube video or reach out to me uh, at Sean Capri, Sean like Connery Capri like the pants. Um, I need one other thing. One other thing before I get into the games that I'm playing. Mark Carabin answered a tweet that I, ha I had put out a little while ago. We are talking about what are we drinking when, when Sea of Thieves comes out. We obviously, if you guys are even remotely interested, let this push you over the edge, okay? I propose that we all get together on a Discord chat or on an Xbox party or whatever it is, and and we just get, get a little drunk, drinking some rum together, and we just go sail the seas in Sea of Thieves. I don't know. Man, is there another game that just inspires you to drink and play multiplayer together? I don't know if there is. This might be the time. And Mark Carabin responded. I asked what kind of rum. He said Fortress rum. And they, they actually, Fortress tweeted back. And there may be something going on here. I don't know exactly what the deals are, but I think that we got some momentum. So let's keep riding this. Let's, let's let all of our favorite rum makers know that we are about to set sail uh, at some point in the springtime. And we're going to play Xbox and drink their rum together. Maybe maybe we'll get some free stuff. I think that would be sweet. So I, I, if nothing else, I'm just ex I'm excited to be playing a game with all of you guys and being a little uh, little, little wasted. <laughs> I think that sounds amazing. Um, let it be the return of Xbox multiplayer glory. It'll be us just being being silly on the on the seas. Two things, guys. I played a whole crap load of Splatoon 2 this weekend with the Splatfest. It hit at the exact right time for me. And I hope that you guys enjoyed it as well. I think that a bunch of us kind of went back to Splatoon 2 this weekend. Even though I felt like I picked the wrong team. I'm really sorry. Donnie and Jason Lacey and everybody at PSVG seemed to be on action. That's where my heart was. But when the time came for me to make a decision, I asked people who were playing and we were trying to make a foursome. And those people, uh, that was Sheldon, uh, Sheldon Benedict and uh, and bobby those guys were were both playing and they both picked they both picked comedy so i went with that even though i don't think any of us even think about going to see a comedy movie in the theater which is kind of how my decision path was so picked the wrong team but i think comedy won in the end but what matters in the end is that we all had fun and, and splatoon is if nothing else that was a game i've been struggling to as you guys know i've been struggling to land on a game that i can kind of mainline and and i sort of forgot about that struggle for a weekend and just had just fun just totally flat out un unbridled fun playing splatoon 2 and kind of just rekindled a little bit of love for my switch it's been it's been waning lately i haven't really been drawn towards my switch but splatoon 2 is a nice kind of return to form for me and for everybody who we got to play with so that was great I want to know what you guys are up to, what you're playing. Let me know in the comments down below on the YouTube video and what consoles you guys are up to. Is, it, is everybody on Switch right now? I wonder if Tacoma will make its way onto Switch. That's the other game that I was playing over the last little while. I finally finished it. I had a really good discussion with Dave on it on the Xbox Drive this week, and I finished it, and it had a... Uh, I guess it's a twist. It's just I guess it's just a climax of the game is was satisfying. I guess it was a satisfying climax. That's some quality what am i even talking about here guys just sexual innuendos all over the place hope you enjoyed that one tacoma surprised in the end i kind of want to play it over again because i it took me a little while to understand how it all worked uh it's very short so by the time i figured it out um it was kind of done but i enjoyed it I, I i am not quite as done with walking simulators or these narrative driven games as i thought i was thanks to tacoma and what remains of edith finch very very good and i love space so if you don't love space, you may not enjoy this one, but Tacoma was a good time for, for me and playing Splatoon. I'm about to dive into Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. I've decided that I will start a Saiyan character. I did this when I rented from the library a, a long time ago, but Tomato is going to be my Saiyan character. I discovered that Saiyan names are based on, and if anybody knows anything about Dragon Ball, then great. If uh, you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, I'm almost done. Uh, Saiyans like Goku... Although I'm not, maybe Goku's the one that actually breaks this rule. I read somewhere that Saiyan names are based on vegetables. Like Vegeta for veggie, like veg vegetable. And Nappa is like some sort of like cabbage. And Raditz for radishes and things like that. So I, I am creating the Saiyan character Tomato. And he is my Saiyan. And I don't know what is up next, but I hope to update you guys later on next week. Because let's play some Dragon Ball. That's kind of the mood I'm in. Like, like who... I don't need anything serious. I just want to just 
button mash and and be a be a tomato saiyan so let's let's go with that guys most of you probably know my guest this week his name is gary gray it's it's all the same letters just jumbled into two different names you've seen him he's actually that one of the artists that creates the artwork for we the gamer cast he's i'm the anchor he created me an animated form so that was amazing and him and i have known each other for a long time but somehow it took up until episode 125 for him to be on the show and i hope you enjoy this we talk about a whole swack load of stuff including maybe a little insult into uh, mr miyamoto so stay tuned for that here he is oh by the way on twitter at gary the koopa that's how you find him on twitter here he is gary gray But yeah, you've been dealing I mean, with that stuff for a while, though, right? Like you've been you've been into tech building stuff, using technology to create things. I can only imagine how frustrating it can be with animation. Uh, well, the, the funny thing is about that is everything I've been using is years behind Sean. Years oh, really? and years behind. Yeah. <laughs> so this this new laptop is still not on the high end, mm-hmm. um, but my laptop before it was. It was running Windows 10, but it was upgraded from, I want to say, Vista. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's a, it's a little old. My dad's yeah. still running Vista on his computer. And and the um, the software I used was actually less than a, a 3DS game in price. Mm-hmm. Because it because it's like years and years out of date. It wasn't even HD. Oh, my goodness. And you're using a, it like now? I'm a budget guy. Oh, well, I've actually I've used up all the keys, so I've actually lost it unless I load up my old laptop now. Yeah. So the animation things, it's gone through a little bit. So how did that even work? Like how, what, what were you using to do all the animation? Uh, it's a, it's a just a standalone program called Moho. Yeah. And it, um, and it matched up it. like the mouth and everything like that too. Like you just kind of like set up the the limbs to to do their little animation because. Yeah, yeah. You rig them on bones, so you draw like a forearm. Oh yeah, of course. And then the hand, and then you put a bone in there, a bone in there, and it automatically moves yeah but like like the i mean the if you're around nintendo thing i did and the ink strike one with some of the first things i ever really did with it oh was it yeah so like oh, that, and that, practice, was, that wasn't man. that wasn't even finished i sent it to bobby i was like what do you think so far and then he like next week he put it on each other. i was like oh god it's so rough but he, just, he went with it <laughs> we got no we got no time to waste on that kind of thing man you just like yeah. that is what it is and you're you're good to go so yeah. like that was when i want to talk to you about that because like you and for a long time and you still do like you just were like outpouring content for everybody like what why <laughs> why would you why would you do that why like i mean it, it seemed to me like it was a everybody had gary gray's or the broken block um stuff as an intro and it was just i, re- I remember thinking like man i gotta i owe this guy something or i don't know like i i, I don't know what motivated you to really just like put yourself out there for for pretty much everybody's everybody's help you helped so many people um i, I must be stupid or <laughs> <something> along those lines. <laughs> a little uh, regret no i uh i just wasn't really interested in creating anything for myself right. um just um yeah, just be, just busy with normal life. So mm-hmm. there were little projects that I had in between. Mm-hmm. Uh, now everything's settled down. I've got a family. I've got a daughter. It's yeah. um, how old's your yeah, daughter? So she's three. Oh man! So, so she's sorry, she's that perfect age where you have to pick everything up every day. That's what I was just gonna <laughs> say, man. I'm I'm like I'm just so grateful that like. Lincoln will like he was attached to you basically so if, like you either put him a jumper and feel like an awful parent because you're just like here sit here while I go do something else so that's one or B is when you just have him attached to your hip and he'll like eat everything off of your clothes I've always got like a hoodie on so I've always got something for him to shove in his face and choking hazards everywhere this sweater is actually pretty interesting the the little ends on them they're they're headphones you can actually oh, wow. you can shove that in, in the pocket there's a there's a line for you to like put your Put, put into your phone they sound like garbage it sounds like crap because it needs to be waterproof like because you can wash this you can put through it in the wash but i don't even know how i got it but so anyways lincoln is lincoln is uh eating all my eating all my clothes shoving everything into his face and that's why he's he's sicker than a dog right now just super mucusy 
But um, how has it been trying to stay involved with games and and content and everything else with with a three year old? It's just it gets worse, doesn't it, Gary? Yeah, she's re- she resisting bedtime at the minute as well, so oh, it's a man. lot of a lot of late nights. Yeah, uh, yeah, that that's that's part of the reason why I've sort of stopped doing the Topic Nintendo podcast because mm-hmm. um, a few reasons really. The main one was scheduling because really to do a podcast you need to keep to a tight schedule yep um keep it as as i mean with what we were doing as well with some new stuff and that you had to keep it up to date and uh it was kind of struggling a little bit on that front because yeah. i mean especially with the resistance that you could hear a banging around on some episodes and, oh, awesome. and screaming my name and stuff like that so uh, <laughs> you're trying to run a professional it. show over here <laughs> <laughs> whoa 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 let's not throw things like professional around fair, fair, fair. <laughs> but basically i think the switches help with the uh managing of games at least yeah of course because you can be like hey look the lion king's on tv and then you can get a couple of levels done on mario <laughs> mm-hmm. is that what you've been playing lately like what's is that and that that's your main system right like you're you're you're, you're mainlining nintendo yeah I, I now um i did start out with everything but nintendo up until mm-hmm. really the N sixty four, but I mean, as you as you gradually get older and you get a house, you get a car, you get a family. You you, I haven't got the cash all the time to to go multiple systems. So I, I just went for Nintendo. It was the one that had the franchises I cared the most about, mm-hmm. even though they don't make F Zero games anymore. <laughs> oh no, kidding! You know what? That's gonna when when Wave Race and F Zero make their way back onto the Switch. That's when you know people can really start losing their mind they've they've sold pretty well so far but you guys just wait wave race well, and f-zero well it, de- it depends because if, <laughs> if it goes the way of star fox then that's it i'm getting an xbox <laughs> let me hear let me hear your quick take on on star fox i think that everybody's got a different thing to be upset about with that one and and i don't know like i'm i'm curious what your what your memories were with that did you did you beat it like i played it for three levels and i was done with it i played i paid full price uh, now anybody watching the video version will see me biting my fingers okay. at this let's and the go. reason is is because i'm going to say something that might upset people okay let's do it miyamoto needed to keep his nose out of that game oh no okay yeah all yeah right, he, all right i single-handedly blame him for the for the disaster that was Star Fox zero now personally i actually liked aspects of it okay um uh, but it was shoehorned to be this sort of gamepad utilizing game which nobody ended up liking uh-huh. now it, it be, hold the brakes a second before people fire away at me i think they already did man <laughs> bayonetta has yep. got the best star fox level that, that's existed nice. for the past 15 years okay you scan the the amiibo in you get the r wing with a costume mm-hmm. on this plane mission and it is it's amazing it looks great it plays great and then when I heard they were making Star Fox, I was like, yes, these are the guys. They know what they're doing. They know how to optimize stuff, mm-hmm. cram stuff in. And then all of a sudden they were like, you have to use motion controls. And you have to divide your concentration over two screens. And a chicken walker. That's my uh, problem. <laughs> that, I actually could get around to the motion controls. I thought that that was really interesting. I can't, I can't argue with everybody screaming, show me what this gamepad is for. And then they show you, I mean way way too late obviously but like that was that was a game that was dedicated to that to me it was just boring like to me i get over like the the motion controls is is a bit of a trigger word and it just people don't even know what they're getting upset about anymore but like yeah, i agree um i can't remember who was talking about it, it might have been toby or, or <laughs> totally different shows it was listening to podcasts today it was either toby or ryan turford from game moose somebody was comparing um was saying that the we sports tennis was one of the best, ten- it might have been Toby, one of the best tennis games in a long, long time. And it made me realize that for the new Mario tennis game, that's the Aces that's coming out that they just announced, I want motion controls, man. I don't, I, I want that at least as an option because I don't just, I'm not bigoted against it. I don't just blindly hate against motion controls. I hate against like, did you ever play Marvel Ultimate Alliance on the Wii? no i did not it is a that is a button masher game but they instead of mashing you're just like waggling and like nobody's wrists are that strong i don't care what your teenage years were like (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, so moving on from that one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Back to, back <laughs> to Star Fox. Not, uh, yes, thank you. I, I agree that the, the motion controls weren't the problem. It was the splitting your attention between the two screens and moving with the motion controls. The reticle did some weird stuff as well because it, it sort of moved that rather than the ship in a way. Right. Um, so it was it was broken for different reasons other than the uh, motion controls. It was it was more the two screen thing, especially on the boss battles when they had this cinematic screen, but you have to fly your ship even though he's looking at your ship front on, mm-hmm. not side on. Uh, yeah, so so that's that. And when, with the Miyamoto thing, it's like yeah, he's a legend. He's done some of the greatest work ever. <laughs> he's comes. not gonna have he's not gonna have hit after hit. Nobody has hit after hit mm-hmm. ever, no matter who you are. Michael Jackson. He's done some bad songs as well. Let's 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 not sort of you know put them on the on the shelf where they're untouchable. Okay. So <laughs> it, it, it's the same with anybody. I mean, Donald Trump. He's had a few misses. <laughs> yeah, but I, yeah, okay. So we're putting in the same sentence: Miyamoto, Michael Jackson, and Donald Trump. You know what? I just wanted to see your reaction to that one, and it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, Sean. <laughs> no, we're, we're 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 allowed to actually just point out, you know, all none of these people are from the countries we come from, so we'll just we'll just point out all the <laughs> faults from all these other people. Like, what are we contributing? Like, like nothing. Um, but actually, that that's, that brings me to a sweet segue, Mister Sean, um, because what's something that does happen in your neck of the woods quite often are these awesome game shows that you get to go to, like. For me, I am in the middle of nowhere. The next, like, even big city is at least three hours away from me. And anything, like, the next big city where anything even happens is a 15-hour drive or a $600 plane ride over to Vancouver or or Toronto. And that's kind of it. So, for me, nobody's coming here. Uh, Maybe Stan Lee because he comes to every single Comic-Con that that there are. Um, But I I don't get to go to, like, any gaming shows. So, like, what's... What's that been like? Because you've been able to go to, to some for quite a while now. Yeah, last year I went to three events. I went to the Switch, um, like, early hands-on thing before mm-hmm. that came out, which is cool. Uh, I went to Insomnia, which changes its name every year. It's Insomnia 61 last year. It's Insomnia 62 this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and EGX, which... Uh, Insomnia and EGX are at the same place, and the Switch reveal wasn't too far off that either. Yep. Um and it's about an hour away from me. So Oh my gosh, that's so worth it. And like EGX <laughs> is the one I don't even know the difference between that, that one sounds the most intense because it's an acronym. Yeah, it's basically it's uh the late E three. So everything mm-hmm. that sort of gets announced at E three kind of ends up there in some form. Now some of the games are released by then, some not. Mm-hmm. Um but I mean if you took um what was there this year, you know, I got to play Sea of Thieves, um Lucky's Tale, uh, the Xbox One X before it was released, it was still on the prototype units. Mm-hmm. What did you think? Or what did you think of the X before? Because like, I mean, we can talk about this now. We both had access to it before it was launched. I was very meh about it. Like, I was very worried about what was about <laughs> to come out because it just. I mean, you really, in some instances, you really had to look for the dis uh, the difference. But although, if they're showcasing it, maybe you had a different experience. So the, the the units that they were using looked nothing like the the retail units. So there was these weird white things with stickers all over. They oh, probably got yeah. trackers in them. You know, mm-hmm. it was really strange. They were hidden behind TVs as well. Like I took a photo of them where I was like leaning over a column, like trying to get this snap. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Super Lucky's Tale had the shortest queue. So I thought, you know, I'll go for that one first. It looks like a Nintendo game, so I should be fairly similar. You know, familiar with the sort of setup that they was using. Mm-hmm. Uh, sat down controller in hand the guys next to me packs in just stops completely the xbox guys come running oh my god quick start it bring out all the cpr stuff for it (laughs) oh get it back going i was like wow this is this is this is a bad start already no kidding um mine was fine it was perfect Um, but i heard the same thing i think it was andrew renee on what's good game she she had like one of the only ones that was busting down and it's one of those like how much you read into it because it really wasn't the same unit and you can see that so i guess you weren't really worried about it no i mean every console on launch has teething problems you know the switch was doom and gloom Mm -hmm. but uh, come on i mean that was fine except for the uh 360 which was like constantly messed up Mm -hmm. um which i'm really surprised microsoft sort of still plundered through that to be fair because it it was a disaster really wasn't it it really i mean Uh, yeah because imagine that now 
the yeah. internet would squash that no matter how good the customer service was like people would find even though that was about as convenient as you could have made that situation and now it'd be like that's not good enough like people are still mad at ea when they got like like they're burying everybody who works there <laughs> even though they managed to get rid of the the loot boxes out of battlefront people will never forgive so that was no. microsoft was very lucky that that happened when it did so um Lucky Cell wasn't the best game to see yeah. running on it yeah. at all. Yeah, I agree. And then, and then Sea of Thieves, sorry, I said it was on the X. That wasn't on the X either. That was mm-hmm. on a normal Xbox. So I didn't really get a good feel of it. But from what I saw from everything else, it looked really cool. But the yeah. the cues the cues for everything else was like Forza. I was watching that over over because Xbox luckily had these like low booths so you could see everything, regardless whether he was, pl- was playing or not. Um, but like, if you say if you wanted to go and play Assassin's Creed Origins on the Xbox One X, mm. they had this massive booth where you could not even see a single thing inside. I'm sure. So um, my impressions were still pretty good of it, to be fair. Yeah. And I I probably believe it, it it is the best like home console in terms of power and stuff out there at the minute. Uh, but it's all down to who you are, really. I mean, this PlayStation nuts who swear that the Xbox is terrible, but it, let's face it the playstation got the worst controller i'm gonna say oh, it now i I'm love gonna... it gary yes thank you i freaking love it it doesn't it lasts maybe an hour and a half you always it's always having to needing a charge and it wants to just jump out of your hands this controller i don't know what it is i don't understand the love for the dual shock really like ever it's not even just this is the best playstation controller they ever made but i've never understood the love for for the dual shock ever I mean, if you take the evolution of man, they're still at the like Neanderthal stage. Oh my goodness! <laughs> What's your what? What is your favorite? If that's if that's one of the worst, like what are you, what controllers do you like? Xbox Elite. Yeah, man. Hands down, hands down, it's the greatest controller on the planet. It, yeah. It, you know, I mean, you, you'll always hear the nostalgia guys going, "Oh well, not not the Nintendo nostalgia guys, just yeah. just no, to get us straight." I mean, in general. <laughs> but you'll always hear pay- people saying the SNES is the best or the Super NES or the Super NES, wherever, whatever, wherever you're from. Um, the <laughs> N64 or the GameCube. And then you've got the weird people who say the PlayStation 1 controller. Uh-huh. And, and then, realistically, the best controllers are going to be the newest ones on the market. I wouldn't say that when the Wii U was out because the gamepad was a little bit meh. But, uh, I picked it up for the first time today. I literally was about to play Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze because of the announcement it got me excited. <laughs> I'm like, let me see what this game is about because I just bought it and I never played it because I'm an idiot. And I picked up the gamepad because it's right here. And like, what is this thing? <laughs> what were they thinking? This is such a piece of crap. Now, as a Nintendo fan and having pretty much just Nintendo from... You know what? It wasn't even that late. It was the Wii era, really. Uh, I had an Xbox 360. Um, mm-hmm. When the Wii U gamepad first... When I first held it, I was like, wow, what a wreck. This you, thing is right. Did you really? Immediately. Yeah, and everybody, everybody else was going, no, it's, it's good, it's got features. It's like, yeah, but it's uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. That's that's the main thing about it. Like, those little pieces of plastic lumps they put on the back mm-hmm. of it. They, yeah, they it's supposed help to like, help it just sit in your hands but it's just like this flat line instead of anything that resembles like being contoured for how you actually hold something like that so i mean there's a lot of negatives about a, a lot of controllers out there really but the the, the best one is the xbox one x mm-hmm. um, i think the, i think the standard xbox controllers have, have been pretty good for a while mm-hmm. um uh, I want a joystick. I want to. I want to bring back the joy. Like that used to be a staple of everybody's sort of like gaming rig, or at least like especially with PC. We used to play games like X Wing and Tie Fighter and Mech Warrior and a bunch of games that like you would only play. I knew some people who played first person shooters on joysticks, like uh, the Microsoft Sidewinder and stuff. I think that that would be that would be a, a holy crap moment at E three, like. Yeah. Just expanding that first party lineup of Xbox controllers. Let's get let's go, Microsoft. If I ran Xbox, Gary. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have a moment of if I ran Xbox in uh, everything that I do from here on out. Because Lord knows I can't just stop imagining that I'm running these companies. I mean the the, the one thing that I'm missing is the light gun with the foot pedals for time of crisis. Ooh. <laughs> Because everybody goes on about light guns, you know, mm-hmm. when you talk about like past peripherals and stuff. But everybody forgets about the foot pedals. Yeah, man. Because I, I had one of those. It was awesome. 
Uh, I mean, you could. I had one that you could sort of change settings for. You could change it to different controls. Oh, that's so, crazy! So I, I had it as reload on some games. <laughs> which that's is really weird. good. Just imagine if that was real life. You had a gun and you had to reload it by stamping <laughs> your feet on the ground. <laughs> You have like these, they're like multifunctional. Like, I always wanted when I was a kid, I always wanted um, what ended up being Heelys actually, because we had rollerblades. <laughs> I, when I was a kid, rollerblades were hitting and they were just all the right. You had to have a set of rollerblades. But I wanted my shoes to like just turn into rollerblades at any at a moment's notice. So I think that's what we're really talking about here. I think that, did you play a lot of like Time Crisis in the arcade too? Like, that must have been. You, if you're going to have that in your home, you're going to be playing that in their crate lots. Um, arcades are pretty much non-existent in yeah. the UK. Well, now, uh, yeah, but back in... The... It, 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 there's hardly any of them, so... Um, Ever? It was a time crisis. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, they, these are arcades, but they're normally thrown in with, like, a bowling alley or something. Sure. And they yeah. have they have games that are beyond old, and the controllers are broken, mm-hmm. they're not maintained. Um, so... I had a couple of goes on Time Crisis, but House of the Dead is everywhere. Oh, yeah. Absolutely everywhere. And I love House of the Dead. Uh-huh. We need more compelling dialogue like what we have in House of the Dead. I love... I want to talk about this Time Crisis thing, though, for a second, because I could never get my freaking coordination down. Like, the, the foot thing just totally... I couldn't... I don't know, man. It's like I would have to really go, I'm shooting, stop shooting get my mind down to the foot pedal and then i'm in cover and then like i just couldn't it was it was just one step too much but i could do like dance dance revolution believe it or not i could do a little little ddr i love that i went to i went to a high school with a lot of people from from overseas i'll put it that way (laughs) my high school was filled with (laughs) you know imported technology and and most of my friends had had mini disc what the hell is that what they were called Mini disc players. Mini discs, yeah. I had the mini little discs tiny well. things, like they were like little yeah. cartridges almost. Sony mini disc. Why does that sound wrong? God, no, that's we... right. Oh, I'm so I... old, I can't even remember the old technology correctly. I, I remember turning up to school one day with my mini disc player. It was like it was a hand me down for my brother. He brought it. It's like you can't buy albums on this thing. It's it's just a cassette player. So he gave it me. But it and, was uh... like right for bootlegging. You just stole yeah. everything on yeah. the internet. You put it on there. <laughs> Oh, so I love it. I, re- I remember walking into school like, "Yo, check this out, guys! I got one and a half <laughs> offspring albums on this thing." Yeah, one and a half. <laughs> like, it's what like, would the value of that other half be? Like, you get, <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, it wasn't quite two, one mm-hmm. and a half. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but uh, yeah, um, I've got to ask you about importing. So, have you ever right. imported any consoles? I haven't, man. That seems like a magical mystery to me. Anybody who's able to 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 figure that out. I mean, now it's a little easier, I guess, play Asia and stuff. But no, I, I never have. Have you? Yeah, I had uh, an imported Dreamcast with the red swirl on. Oh, wait. Why? I'm trying to think of what... I thought mine had a red swirl oh, on no, it. Oh, no. Sorry, sorry. Everywhere else in the world except for Europe had a red swirl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. We had, we had a blue swirl because of some copyright mess up. No but, uh, way. Yeah, it's the same with uh, Star Fox. Like, you guys got Star Fox, Star Fox 64, yeah? Yeah. We got um, Lilac Wars. No way. Yeah, and uh, the this the Super Nintendo one was called uh, Star Wing. Why? What's the what's the overlap? What did they miss? I think it was a car company that was called Star Vox V O X. That's amazing. So they they changed it because of that reason. I'm sure that was the uh, people are going to correct me here, but I think that was the reason why. Well, the other thing is people are going to be surprised that I didn't know. I bet like everybody knew that. I was probably the last person ever to discover that Mario was Jumpman originally. Yeah. <laughs> and I and I brought it up. I was so embarrassed. I like Bobby used to do Know Your Facts. He's on the Geek Cast. He used to do like yeah. this trivia thing, and I brought up like what like something about Mario's original name, and they thought I was joking. Because I was trying to trick them, and they 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 knew that very so easily they, because they're actual fans. Having having the Japanese console was kind of cool because in Europe we used to get everything last. It was like I think a year and a half before we got anything. That's so the be Jap- so frustrating. Um. Well, it would be now with the internet. Yeah. Back then it was like, eh, we we get it when we get it. Mm-hmm. But by then we've already got game guides and stuff out before the games. Well, then when the games come out, then they're super cheap. That was a, those things had short lifespans and, and uh, they had to. I remember we used to buy them at because I used to work at like the Canadian Best Buy, and when those things went on clearance, their cost in the system would drop down to a penny. 
So <laughs> we would all be like like watching those things super closely just because we knew about when that, that switch was going to happen. And we would just be like at the end of every shift on a Sunday, just checking like which ones went over to a penny. Games that we didn't even care about. Like, gosh, there's pro- there's a good couple of Resident Evil ones in there. Like some of those um, revelations, I think, were just buying up for a penny. Who Who cares? But we just fill up our shelves with useless with useless paper. I've often thought about this notion of you never know, uh, like if you just play games that are new to you, sort of like setting up your own little backlog, then like who cares? And that's sort of similar, I guess, to if you're living in a territory where it just doesn't hit you and you don't know about it. Um, what's your like? What's your your backlog kind of like? Like, are you right up to like? on on the same day releases i've done the play games that are a year old i've set myself literally a year back and it didn't it didn't help me um my well, backlog i've still got gamecube games oh okay so, so like, you count all the fun. way back yeah i mean it, it's kind of because whenever a new system comes out I, i've mm. always brought games towards end of a system's life and then like um i added ds early believe it or not as well a month early before anyone else in the mm-hmm. uk um it's because of a club nintendo uh, reward that they did mm. and and that, that was bad because i don't think any games came out of that system for like six months mm-hmm. <laughs> not that we're worth screaming and shouting about anyway that's for sure um but you still get distracted by them either way so i, I end up leaving point. games behind so like pikmin 2 is one of them um i started it didn't get very far but it's one that i really want to go back and play mm-hmm and like now doing like game reviews and stuff, it's probably a little bit worse because I'm not finishing games anymore. Like I used to complete games through and through before I moved on. Yeah. Um, what games re- but, reviews are you up to? You're working with Nintendo dads on some stuff, or are you are you on your own? Like, what's what's the deal with that? Um, what's the deal with that? <laughs> well, uh, N- Nintendo dads is um yeah, it's awesome that those guys got me on board in a, in a, in a little bit. But I mean, it it helped that I sort of had a European um 3ds mm-hmm. um because uh obviously that they're, they're over different territories they're all over the place um they're starting up nintendo dad's um south asia soon as well oh <laughs> not interesting really. they're, they're, oh i was like really. i don't know see this is the thing man you <laughs> can really. tell me anything i was just like it's so foreign to me anyways like how the hell would i know any different so uh every so often they'll they'll get games for me to review that are european so um like uh we had new style savvy Mm-hmm. We got that early. It's new style boutique in uh, Europe, but we we had that early. So obviously, being this fashionista that I am, <laughs> because I, I'm well renowned for that, you know. I mean, I'm surprised you haven't got sunglasses on, Sean, with the uh, glare. I can't, I can't handle it. It's just too awesome much for me. <laughs> I know. I'm surprised you're not wearing sunglasses. That would be the styling thing to do. You're so, so, so this wearing inside. This goes back full circle because okay. all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we started getting games early again. Mm-hmm. Uh, earlier than Japan, yeah. in some cases. So we, we got Kirby uh, Battle Royale. Um, I think that was out in October over that here. That is so uh, bizarre. Yeah, man. We got a new style boutique early. Um, and I've, I have actually got games that, that came out on Nintendo systems that you guys didn't get mm-hmm. at all. Doshin the Giant, which is train wreck of a game. And uh, uh, Tingle's, Ro- Ro- Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land. Yeah, that's got to <laughs> be good. That's it. Like Tingle Tingle? Like... Like the, yeah, like from the Zelda. Zelda character? <laughs> it's the most god-awful game that? I've played. It's bad. But um, How long are you going to gonna keep that up, man? How long are you going to keep up? Like, yes, please, throw, throw me all of your trash games. Let me play them first. <laughs> Give me first access at all this garbage. But, um, like, yeah, I mean, reviewing from has been pretty awesome. They gave me some games which are, you know, uh, other for other territories and stuff as well but mm-hmm. um it's mainly the 3ds ones that they couldn't do which i've reviewed a few mm-hmm. um it's really awesome i mean I, I i i was with justin at one of the game shows again full circle back round. that's awesome um uh, so you know i got to know him quite well um uh, it's just it's just awesome i mean I've, I've listened to them since their early days same with you and mm-hmm. bobby and you are one of the very first names i remember popping up when you were there like right from the very beginning i'm like this is why would anybody like back when i'm like a nobody's listening like i would just pretend that nobody's and that's a much like more comfortable place to be in is if you just think that nobody's listening but now now it's clear that at least two people listen so i have to at least be a little bit careful keep the racism down a little bit gary <laughs> well it's it's really strange because i mean you go on some dating sites and you end up on we the gamer cast <laughs> <laughs> that's right. 
<laughs> no, I, I'm joking. The, the way that I came into the uh, into the group really was um, I started listening to Nintendo Voice Chat, which is the origin point for most people, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, one day I was like, you know what? I wish that there was more podcasts doing the Nintendo thing. And mm-hmm. just as I was thinking this, Mark Caribbean popped up in the Nintendo Voice Chat forums on Facebook. We were like, hey, guys, check out my show, the Warp Whistle Podcast. No so way. Like, so I was like, well, that was strange. Like, I was literally just thinking about it, and this thing popped up. Get out of my so, head, Mark. From there, I uh, met all you guys, and, you know, it extends the snowballs and carries on. And I didn't know that. I definitely thought that Nintendo Dads was the connection. I didn't realize that, that it was the Canardian Mark Carabin. No, Nintendo Dads were actually one of the later ones. So I think it went uh, Warp Whistle, uh, and then, then Bobby to Bobby, and him, yeah, connected. Then, then, then to you, and then to Nintendo Dads. My God. And we're all just kind of like, can we even do this? Like, that's really, I think, the first intent. I don't know if it's if it's the same with you. And and I kind of wanted to get into, like, a, you've had a multitude of projects over the last couple of years. And and you kind of mentioned that the stuff that you were doing as small projects for uh, for Ink Strike and, and everything back then, that was sort of like where it starts. Like, I wanted to see if there was, like, what's the history of your creative outlet in this, in this way? Like, I can't imagine... Like little Gary, like no beard Gary, just like I, I, I was born with this. Yeah. Oh right. Okay. So that's why I can't imagine it. Thank you for you're just out out of the womb, just like full on beard. It's it's incredible. I that must be a must be a, a British thing. Um. So like where like I t- I like to talk to Adam about this. I like to talk to anybody who's basically like picked up a pen and pencil and done something other than just write or do math. Um, like where does, where does creating art and just anything of that nature, where did that start for you? Um, I can't really pinpoint it to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always tried to keep myself occupied with something or another. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got guitars, synthesizers, bass guitars, mm-hmm. I do programming music been in bands and then i've done some artwork and stuff and the animation was a little bit rough because my artwork's better than the animation could come out right uh, but that that was a, a sort of learning curve from the software point of view and how mm-hmm. to do it and yeah I, I just don't really know i can't really pinpoint it but i always from a kid i always like the stuff like like lego meccano connects oh yeah connects yeah absolutely we like, used to I, break I, everything yeah i i had the roller coaster in my bedroom mm-hmm. um I got it for Christmas the one year and sort of built it without my parents knowing. And they opened the door and were like, what? What is this? Yeah, <laughs> like, no kidding. I, I built a roller coaster, mom. It's three foot tall by eight foot. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> They're like, what have we unleashed? <laughs> yeah, like I pushed my bed against the window and everything just to make make sure I had the room for it. I love it. So that must have been encouraging for them. And like that's like because that's what I really like to go back and look at is like what did our parents sort of like put in front of us to start sparking that in in our minds and whether it is lego or even video games i talked to drew about this last week about like how role-playing games sort of uh make its mark on your on your mind in a different way than you might think it you think video games will just fry your head but it just like incites this creativity that will probably be with you for the rest of your life and so now i ask now as a parent like how do you is that something that you keep in mind or just something that sort of happens like how was how is creativity manifesting in the in the gray house also is gary gray your real name yes how your parents are made they just took your last name they're like let's read your like like same same letters and if we just rearrange the middle ones we're we're good we don't have to put any more thought in there than that no middle name either uh so it all started when my mom was pregnant and they enjoyed a couple of bottles of jack daniels and Uh then my name my name happened (laughs) yeah yeah exactly just a little dyslexia and then you're good uh yeah i don't really know about the origins of the name so much i know i'm named after one of my dad's friends and i think it's just conveniently fit into gray as well so (laughs) no it's it's so awesome but now Uh, as a parent like what's the what's the creative canvas in the in the gray house yeah, we, we, we try to get really involved with my daughter as much as we can. Like, yeah. um, I'm, I'm really bad at reading and writing, so we read books to her every night. Well, she reads them to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, we, we've always got pens, pencils, paints, oh, right. all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, and she, I'll get her involved in the games as well, yeah. because um, whether they're on the tablet and they're the learning games from like, uh, B- the BBC, they've got a few out mm-hmm. or, um, whether she, you know, I give her a joy con, which is awesome for kids. They're the right size for little kids. 
And uh, let her play on Yono and the Celestial Elephants. And... Yono, I love it. Okay, there's another Mark Harriman shout out. He's going to love that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. He loves that game, doesn't he? I know. <laughs> um, but she finished the first level on Sonic Mania the other day. Oh, snap. But but she had the controller. Normally, she just jumps up and down. Yeah. And then we, we're doing something else. And then all of a sudden, I hear the... Because uh, I put her on the time trial one, so mm-hmm. she can just keep looping around. I hear the, uh, the thing spin... And I turned around, I was like, what? Do you, you've just finished the level on yourself? And she's there like, Daddy, I did it! <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like bawling, you're just so proud. Yeah, just, like, I, I, was to, I was into to tears, and yeah. uh, my other half was just like, grow up. <laughs> right, yeah, it's like, well, like this isn't like when she was walking for the first time, or like when she said, Daddy, <laughs> you're like, no, no, I was waiting for the moment that she finished the Sonic level, and that's when, <laughs> that's when the proud moments were really coming. Yeah, it's uh, so it's crazy. I mean, when, when you look back at when you started with the origins of games, it's it's always a, a weird one because you can't quite pinpoint what sort of age you were mm-hmm. and when you first finished anything. I almost think that's uh, like better when you just there's, it's it almost feels more like you were born into it. Like I feel very fortunate. I have a very good friend I've talked about often, neighbor Matt. I don't have a memory where where we meet, and like that's awesome. Like th- I feel like those are the best things in your life that you're just like. You actually can't remember life without it. Yeah. And that, that, those I, are the best things in life. I, I, I can always remember having uh, this little Space Invaders thing. I mean, it took like 17,000 batteries. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was like a little standalone device with like little lever switches mm-hmm. to move left and right. And uh, a Commodore 64. Oh, um, nice. Loaded with the greatest Thomas the Tank Engine game at the time. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I think I remember that man. Oh, it reminds me of like the little Fisher Price games, or it was like uh, Fire Engine games and stuff like that. Yeah. Just like basically anybody and everybody who could put out a licensed anything, you had yeah. it, man. So Pretty like, much, yeah. what, so you mentioned before that you were, you know, before the sixty four, you were anything but Nintendo. Like, is that get that gets into it a little bit? The, the Commodore sixty four is going way back, but like Sega, Sega was the thing, right for. I, I, oh yeah, England. yeah, yeah. And Nintendo still isn't really predominant here as as people might think it is. Mm-hmm. Um, we we sort of have. If you walk into a local game store, you've got a row, the entire wall of PlayStation one end, mm-hmm. the other side, an entire row of Xbox, and then in the in the middle, you've got like four little stands, mm-hmm. and one of them will be T-shirts and hoodies, another one will be guidebooks, another one will be merchandise, and then in the corner of the other one will be Nintendo. Yeah. Oh my that's goodness! How, that's how small our sections are. Like with the amiibo craze, we only ever had like three or four. Mm-hmm. And this this is obviously my local shop. It's probably different everywhere else. Right. But my, the the few local shops by me have a really teeny tiny Nintendo display, and it's been like that for a long time. But what about the amiibo craze? Like, what did you did you dive into that, or was it like because it wasn't really prevalent right in front of you? Were you maybe going online? Like Amazon didn't really pick up on it until like I want to say like Palutena was maybe yeah. one of the first ones you could pick up on Amazon. And like that was coming off of the Skylanders craze where Chelsea and I were just going crazy. We would go to – and we refused to go on the internet for it. Like she wanted to collect every single one but felt like going on the internet was cheating. So it was almost like this – it was a fine line of uh, in the past where you didn't even have internet and obviously it comes in and it's helping everybody. We were really kind of holding on to the good old days of – of hunting things down and and trying to find you're like you'd see the display and you'd look behind each one just to see if maybe one was like maybe there was a Mega Man hiding there or something like that one of the one of the more difficult ones to find so like how was the amiibo craze for you um well we have a really good online nintendo store Mm -hmm. um so um they normally tweet out or you can get notifications for email which are normally about five days late but they they get a notification that the stuff's going up for pre-order. Yeah. If you're not there within 30 minutes, then I'm sorry you've lost. Right, man. Um, but yeah, that's that's mainly the way. Uh, I wasn't too head, heads in on the um, Amiibo craze. Mm-hmm. And then I ended up picking up the rare ones. Little Mac, uh, Rosalina. Oh, nice, man. All How'd that, you all get that those? Sort of first. Um, I, I Especially really Little Mac. Could... Little, Little Mac was one of the first ones that was crazy to find. Oh, so I went on holiday to Spain and... There was this little game shop there, and they had them in there. And, just and then like, I was like, "Holy yeah!" So, but what like different language though? Like, what was? How does that work? Because like you guys are all so packed tightly in together. Is there like we have English and French, but you get the same thing across the entire country? 
I haven't even thought about buying stuff in Europe. Is it all one SKU, one one package? How does that work? Yeah, it's it's one thing basically, and you have like six or seven different languages on the back in small. So it's 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 all the same sort of stuff. Okay. Um, so I picked up some of the rarer ones, and then I was like, you know what? I'll leave the the obvious ones that are going to be around forever and collect everything else. What was obvious though to you? Because I wasn't, I wasn't counting <laughs> anything, man. I was assuming everything was going to be super rare, and trying to pick everything up, like an Animal Crossing. That was when I just totally we we missed. We we should have waited on pretty much every single one of those because you can pick those up for two bucks, I think. So I'm missing, I'm missing the obvious ones that I thought I was going to get. See, yeah, yeah, which are Mario, Luigi, Peach, Bowser, Yoshi. <laughs> oh my. God. That's hilarious. <laughs> I have a, I've I've, got, I don't know if I can do this again though. I don't like. Do you think Am- Amiibo is coming back like with another wave or anything? Like it seems to have quieted down a little bit. They've got a giant Pikachu. Is it Detective Pikachu? That's he's he's huge. Is it a he? Yeah, it's it's. I hope not. I hope they don't come around and do it again. I like the like you get one with a box game. We mm-hmm. did that bundle quite a lot here, or like the the wedding oh, ones. That's a good you know. Call. You get you get three with the with the game. That that sort of stuff's better, I think, than than releasing like fifty thousand characters for Smash Bros. again. Mm-hmm. I, I hope that doesn't happen again. I won't I won't I won't be uh, joining a second time. Yeah, it's one of those like lightning in a bottle type of things. That it's yeah. sort of like the the music genre, like the the rhythm games, where you try to make them happen again, and like people have people have moved on at least for now. Like collectibles yeah. are things that will always be like there's there's a. There's something in us that we need to just, we have to catch them all. Like that's kind of the thing. Maybe maybe the next one will be a, a set of Pokemon amiibo, Pokemon only. When yeah, that, it's when funny. That comes out. It's funny you say that because uh, the Happy Meal toys at the minute are Pokemon. Oh, that's there you go. Like, there you go. We've been today, so we got one there. Oh, that's awesome. That's actually really. That's a what kind? That's a McDonald's toy. Yeah. You say it's it, Happy it did, Meal. You did all this weird thing that you point its mouth, but uh, that, that's oh, gone that's something. really good. And like but I like, love like what's the occasion? There's nothing happening with Pokemon right now. Oh no, we you know we get the McDonald's toys earlier than you guys for some reason again. Yeah. Like <laughs> Spain has Spain when I went there they had them and then about four months after we had them and then right. you've just had the Mario line I think. We yeah we were late we were later than the states. Yeah we we had them last summer. Oh my god, what the same ones? I guess that's the thing. Well, at least at least there, like Mario was still kind of like Mario Odyssey, and the Switch was still kind of was still kind of happening. But I feel like typically Happy Meal toys and McDonald's toys are at least tied into like a movie or a game. Like, like they're just like okay, now it's Pokemon time. It seems that seems strange to me. It is, yeah. and they but they came with a, a shiny Pokemon card. Oh, that's awesome! And I was thinking, wow, like when when this was whatever it was that almost 20 years ago probably now that the pokemon cards was out mm-hmm. we would have fought to the death for a shiny card damn right damn <laughs> and right. then they just throw them in a happy meal box with a toy mm-hmm. yeah like holograms hey. back in the day were the coolest thing you kind of like shoot me from side to side and they show differently yeah. and they're just they're just shiny and that's what it was that's, it was a shiny pikachu card that they threw in there oh i freaking love it what are you expecting from from pokemon like are, what's your connection with pokemon actually i usually have people come in that are 15 20 years younger than us and they're like, I grew up with Pokemon, and I'm like, I don't get it at all. What's your? Do you have a connection? Did you ever? Did you ever jump on the Pokemon train? I, I have a massive connection uh, with it. Um, it was one of the greatest Christmas memories I've probably got. Nice. Uh, when I say memories, I don't know what happened with the family that day. I was leaned <laughs> up against the the, the 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 back doors, just yeah. playing Pokemon all day got through a whole bunch of batteries that was actually on my christmas list it was pokemon and batteries um, <laughs> <laughs> um that's so awesome yeah I, I bet a lot of us it's good that you have that memory but i bet a lot of us had batteries on our on our list because every <laughs> toy anytime you saw like a toy commercial it was like batteries not included and so like we all just we needed batteries and that's when like the energizer god remember the energizer bunny and yeah, that was he's still like the, going. Oh, he keeps going and going. Oh, why does that last? Like, he's still, he's still in England. He's still on the TV now. Yeah, but he's not really. Maybe it's because we're watching different TV, like we're actual grown-ups, where they're not advertising batteries oh, to kids yeah, anymore. Yeah. Maybe that's the reason. Oh, but there's yeah. like a Star Wars one at the minute with him in. So. Oh, that that makes sense. Yeah. Somehow. But um, yeah, Pokemon is is 
it, I have lost connection with it. Um, yeah. I actually got the latest one as a review from Nintendo Dads as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like it. I think it's a really Wait good game. Wait a minute. Stop, but... stop, stop. Why was this... You said this was the best memory, and then you just like, you're going to go back to Nintendo... What was memory? What happened? <laughs> well, I got sidetracked by the, by the Energizer Bunny. I'm sorry. I'm having okay. midday coffee, so it's my fault. So, I used to buy the official... We'll go back further than the Christmas... Way further than the Christmas thing. All right, lead us so, up. So, we, I used to buy the official Nintendo magazine in, in the UK, which um, was amazing. It was really good. It was basically our version of Nintendo Power, but we didn't have that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, reading through it, and they used to have all these early previews and hands-on and stuff like that. And uh-huh. Pokemon... Po- Pocket Monsters cropped up loads. It was in there a lot. And then uh, we saw Hey You Pikachu, which never came out, but that was in there as well. Um, and then we got cheat books every once in a while with them, and they would have Pocket Monster guides and stuff in there. And I was thinking, well, where is the, the damn game? <laughs> it's been like <laughs> two years, three years now. Where is it? And then all of a sudden, uh, I, I remember, because I didn't have any like cable or satellite at the time, and uh, being at school, my friend was like, oh, wow, there's this new cartoon starting. It looks amazing. It's called Pokemon. And by then, they they confirmed it's called Pokemon. And I just turned around to him and went, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, the next day at school, I came in with a blank VHS. I was like, you yes. are connecting that to your satellite and recorded every episode for me. <laughs> And so he did. He re- used to record it, and I used to go to school the next day, pick up the VHS, watch it, give it in back for the next episode. We used to have this like transfer of VHS oh, tapes. I love it. Pokemon, and uh, yeah, so like the game then got confirmed, and that was straight on my Christmas list. Mm-hmm. And like this, this was like a the original hype train. It was like I was you know, just about to say that somehow, like they hooked you before you even knew like exactly what it is. It was just like the notion of these small little monsters that you go around and, and collect, I guess. Like, is that sort of like what triggered in your, in your mind that you wanted it? Yeah. I mean, it was sort of, I think I, it was just hearing about it. Cause it sounded really unique. You know, yeah. you're going around collecting all these things. You're trading with your friends with, and battling with your friends through link cables. Mm-hmm. It was, it was oh, crazy. And I, yeah. But, but I remember reading articles that it's unlikely to see it in the in the West. Mm-hmm. And then, like hearing that it's going to come out was just sort of it's like that thing you know you put uh, you put food on a high shelf and you're like, I really want that but I can't reach it. <laughs> that was pretty much anything that came out of Japan though. Like it, yeah. especially back then we talk about this all the time. But like Japan was just a, this mystery magic land. What what is coming out of there? What does it all mean? Will, will we be lucky enough to get it? And definitely I could see that when we were lucky enough to get just a little whiff of Japan. That sounds weird. Uh, we, weird just, we, just, we just ate it up. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's a free soundbite for Johnny Casino. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I just sort of uh, asked for it for Christmas and then I literally can't remember anything else of that Christmas. I'm trying to remember, remember like anything dinner. that comes out now. I'm really bad for this. Like anytime that there's anything new, um, I, I basically just don't, I, I'm, I'm the reason why they, all they do is like sequels and rehash like superhero movies and stuff where like, I don't look at really anything and go, I want that. Like, it, like it's hard for me to get hyped up, um, over anything that's really brand new, which is, which is a shame because I also know that that's where the most exciting stuff is happening is, is things that are, that are entirely new. I think I might have been one of the people, just like Dave Moore, who were just burned by uh, by No Man's Sky, and I didn't even buy it. I was yeah. just sort of like I I had built up this idea in my head that this is something that I wanted, and that it sort of fell flat. And um, yeah, I just I don't really see a new trailer and get really pumped about it. I guess to go back to the beginning of this uh, this episode it again, it always works <laughs> out that way, man. Yeah, um, something happened with the Switch reveal thing that that I'm glad happened now. And that was, that was my hands on with Zelda mm-hmm. because I was not impressed. Yeah, I was I mean, not impressed. That's in a great slightest. example. I wasn't, I was like, Oh, I don't know about that. That's why I was yelling and swearing at Bobby for spending money on this thing. I didn't see anything. that. <laughs> so basically we, we got the hands on, we were first in the queue. They gave us a ticket and they're like, this is your allocated time slot. You'll be in straight away. Yeah. So we, we go in and I just about get out of the shrine of resurrection. See that, that, panning view of the world and they're like okay time's over mm-hmm. I was like, what i haven't even played the game i've pressed a a couple of times 
That's all and you're so, gonna get. That's you just they were leaning on the maybe nostalgia a little bit, the name of Zelda, and that was it. So basically, I uh, I took because I was with my little brother at the time. I said, you know what, we'll play all the other games. There's not a queue for them. We'll play those. We won't play stuff like Mario Kart or Splatoon because we know what they're like. But we did eventually get round to both. Mm-hmm. We played all the other games, Arms, a really early build of Arms, One Two Switch and stuff. And then towards the end, it was like, right, all that's left is snipper clips. Mm. That, that's it. That's the only snipper clips. Or we can try and get on Zelda again. So we went for Zelda again. And they, they gave us a, a fairly big chunk of gameplay. But I remember going down that grass verge at the beginning. And then the frame rate was horrific. Mm. Turns out it was just must have just been that build and the Switch I was on. And we walked away. And I was like, I'm so, so disappointed. I'm amazed by the console. I really liked ARMS. really liked Splatoon. But I'm really disappointed by Zelda. But I'm going to get it anyway. Mm-hmm. Because I've played every other Zelda. I've completed every other Zelda. Let's not talk about CGI, but the the CGI ones. But <laughs> I'm I'm gonna have to buy it and play it anyway. Mm-hmm. And so buying it, I wasn't I wasn't expecting it to be that great because of my hands on. But we 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 it was the first ever midnight launch I'd ever been to. But were you Switch. tempted just to go Wii U? Because I was definitely looking at this thing like I don't know if I want to j- drop the four hundred dollar for me. It was three ninety nine. I'm like if there's just the one game and there's not really any promise of other things coming out. I wasn't going to. I was. I was going to you go. Weren't even Wii thinking U, about it. Yeah. Basically, I, it was when I turned thirty. So my parents were like, "We we know you like your com- computers. Do you want a new one?" I was like, "Well, your that computers. ties in with a switch." So uh, <laughs> that ties a, in with a switch. My so, dad yeah. always asks me how my blogging is going, but he means podcasting. Yeah. So that's that's great. Well, people still call them computers here anyway. You know, it's computer oh, games. Not vi- yeah, it's computer games, not video games. Oh, so. Okay, they're not just being like out of touch. It's no, just, the, the younger just... generation will say video games, but the older generation will say computer games. Oh, we used to, that's, you know, we used to do that too, actually. Everything used to be either Nintendo or, or computer games. Because yeah. for us, that, that's what it was. We didn't have anything. We just played, we played terrible ports of Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter on our PC. <laughs> so, so, so basically my parents ended up buying me the Switch and, and uh, Zelda. And um, That's really nice. Me and my brother pre-ordered it from the same store or mm-hmm. well, we thought it was the same store but it turns out he had ordered it from the, the store of the same name the other end of the city oh, when funny. i ordered it on the one end and we, we met up afterwards at like probably one o'clock in the morning by now and came back to my house because he was going to stay here mm-hmm. and we ended up playing zelda till like five in the morning <laughs> oh that's that's the way that launches should go really that's yeah so what kind of store was it because everybody was there was a whole thing with game was it they had like a they had a pre-order before anybody else but then they didn't really fulfill that was sort of a big deal uh, I can't. Don't get me started on game because that's a rant that we don't have enough time for. So um, I've got a lot I ordered... time for. I just I want that and I want what's new with Topic Nintendo. That's what the rest. Uh, you know, stay tuned, game... everybody. Though that's what's remaining. <laughs> game used to be EB Games, Electronic Boutique. Oh, I didn't know that. And when it was Electronic Boutique, it was amazing. Oh, it was so good. You ordered something, they had it. They had a rewards card. It was the best. And then. Then they changed to a uh, game, mm-hmm. and there, then there was this other store called Game Station, mm-hmm. which they were owned by the same company. But Game Station was cheaper, mile better. And then they were like, you know what? Why are we creating this false economy for ourselves? Let's merge together as game. And then they went bankrupt. And then they they got saved and carried on, but all their prices skyrocketed really high. Mm-hmm. So now they are the most expensive unknowledgeable terrible let's just not go there oh man how does how does a company even like anyway well i guess they they probably won't last every everything is just gonna fail and amazon will be or taco bell if you watched um demolition man taco bell is the the company that owns everything everything just merges into that Uh, Um, taco Taco bell's pretty much failed here though same as dunkin donuts that didn't work out either yeah that's not gonna there's something like very intriguing about dunk it just sounds delicious like I don't even yeah. know if it is good. I, I just it's just even the coffee. I just want to drink it. Apparently, so, America runs on it. So basically, it's uh, Smiths or Toys R Us, the two that I go to, or the Nintendo UK store. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, largely everywhere else, but game is cheap. Yeah. So um, yeah, that, so I ordered from Smiths, and they they are they have they are the best. They really are. They're they're so much cheaper. I mean, it's the difference between paying fifty five pound for Legend of Zelda on release or mm-hmm. forty seven. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's a big difference. You know what's crazy, man? Is like we're coming up on a year on the Switch, and we are we like because I like talking about origin stories on this show. I like talking about like like good old memories and things. It's like, 
pretty soon the switch is going to be like a good old good old memory like remember when they announced that remember how that felt that's that's crazy the last thing i wanted to tell you, ask you about gary is the future of topic nintendo we kind of touched on it a little earlier started going at a podcast and yeah man scheduling is is tough but i remember listening to that for the very first time and i thought that like the the mix that you had of like topic based and guest based i thought was like holy crap why didn't i think of that like it was one of the every now and then there's a concept that comes around you're like you're mad at yourself for not thinking about it and topic nintendo was one of them so like talk to me about uh maybe where that fell apart you can't touch on that before but where are we going now like it's not it's not done you're not done with topic nintendo no no but um i'll just I, i'm gonna have to get your credit card details so i can send you the money for that bribe okay, um, okay. <laughs> basically it's going back to its old format mm-hmm. but it's not going to be a podcast I think it's going to be a youtube thing yeah um it, it, there's a few reasons why um one of the main ones is because i, I can't schedule it well enough to be a proper podcast right um, youtube allows more flex- flexibility there you think yeah um yeah basically yeah and um we're going back to the original format in a way and sometimes it'll just be me on my own and that's that's due to basically scheduling again so if someone's around to do something we'll do it mm-hmm. if not do it on my own uh but as you probably know from the later episodes i've got uh, a guy called phil myth um mm-hmm. to co-host it with me and He's been awesome. I actually met him at one of the game shows as well. I love it. Uh, which was just crazy. Mm-hmm. And uh, and all that came from a, a Mario Kart match where he basically threw a shell and took out my little brother on the finish line. <laughs> <laughs> Should be a so, friend end- ending moment, not a friend forging moment. So I made this video and then uh, I got in contact with him. I was like, do you mind me uploading this onto the internet because he's got your name on it? And he was yeah. like, no, no, that's cool. And then, yeah, that's, that's how it, that escalated, really. That's nice, um, man. And then this is a story for another time, but almost end up killing my little brother with a real life splat roller. <laughs> oh no way! I can't think of any like I do. I, I somehow I, I managed to do a ton of painting as it's every house I like walk into. It's just like, do you want to paint this thing? And yeah, so I'm just always thinking of like if I just had a gun, I just went, <laughs> I'd score all my points. I'd swim up this thing. This was actually like a real life splat roller. It was it a was splatoon, huge. Like. It was like, yeah, it was huge. It was a, a Splatoon photo opportunity thing, oh, like it. this photo point. And basically, we was like, yeah, should we take, have a photo together, Phil? You know, he's, he'd come on top of Nintendo as a guest, but mm-hmm. we actually met him there. And he's like, yeah, sure. So I'm holding this roller. And then all of a sudden, the prop breaks, just snaps oh, off the top. My God, and no lands kidding. right on my little brother's head. He's like bent down with like these splat doolies pointing them at Phil. Mm-hmm. And so he didn't even see it coming. <laughs> and he, the next thing we know, you see the bang. And then my little brother's like spread out on the floor going, ah. What and happened? The, Nintendo, the Nintendo rep comes up like, "Oh my God, we knew that this prop wasn't. Oh no!" You don't Quick. say that. You don't have to say that you had doubts <laughs> about know, this. Yeah, I was like, about it. So uh, yeah, it was it was insane. But uh, they basically stuck it together. A bit of gaffer tape on there, and everything oh, was yeah, fine. Oh yeah, sure. And he wasn't. Yeah, not permanent, immediate permanent damage. Anyways, uh, do you want to talk about what we might be doing on on topic Nintendo? Do you want to... so so basically yeah it's returning in its old format so we'll we'll talk about a topic put it on the internet and good times we'll so but happens. basically uh when when I got fill in we we sort of we were doing reviews and stuff as well and then it 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 grew to an unmanageable level yeah so um we decided to do something else and as we were getting the next step prepared someone else actually um approached us and was like uh, we want to work with someone else and then we ended up being this big group of us so there's a, a few of us doing something together now nice. uh, we've, we've sort of me and phil taking the, the helm of it really mm-hmm. uh oh. but it's it's so cool like it, it, we, we're not we're not gonna talk about the name of it and stuff yet that's gonna come a bit later on oh. but uh i will tell you that it's, it's a website for a start there's a website there mm-hmm. and it's it's largely built so i'll give you a little preview after we, we after we're done here sean oh, so nice can... man but well, basically, basically, it's it's been back to a community. We've yeah. got uh, we've got all sorts of people on there. We've got mainly YouTubers at the mm-hmm. minute. Um, we we might have some people who do art coming on there, and basically, it's just just a community effort to say like we're doing what we're doing, and and have everybody's chipping in with reviews, which is already a thing that's happening. It's already going. So when it eventually launches, I'll I'll be sure to let you know and let everyone else know. Um, so it's it's just really awesome. We've worked with honestly some fantastic people who are really talented. 
Nice, man. It's so rewarding to like have an idea and then pull together a group of people. And it's like, like group projects in school sucked, but group projects on the internet is awesome. It seems like everybody's like capable and willing and just wanting to put forward their best. So I can't wait to see it. And definitely yeah. I will, I will share it. And, um, you know, I think we'll probably, we'll probably wrap here because that that's about an hour, but I wanted to thank you so much. This is like so long coming. I feel like I've had, like I have the list of the the shows. You know, I've got the spreadsheet and everything that happens. I'm like guests that I need to have on. And it's been like Gary Gray has been at the top of that forever. And I, you know what I've been waiting for? I needed a, I needed Topic Nintendo to have a bit of a rebrand and everything. So this, is, <laughs> this is perfect timing, man. Thank you, thank you for for chatting with me today. Yeah, it's been awesome. That is the end. I feel like Gary and I may have covered more topics just there than than I really wrote down. I wanted I have so 